Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 119th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Now to start off, I just wanted to discuss the giveaways really quick. So as many of you know, I am holding a giveaway in collaboration with iCryptic and it's an iPad mini giveaway. Now to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is go to any of my videos, rate them up and leave a comment down below in the comment section with the key phrase free iPad mini contest. And once you do that, you'll be automatically entered. Now, of course, yes, you can enter in this video. However, we are concluding the giveaway soon, actually this Sunday. So be sure to get your entries in before then. Also earlier this week, I did announce that I am holding a new giveaway in collaboration with the members of iPod Uplink and Jailbreak Nation. Now we're giving away a new fourth generation iPad and in order to enter to win that all you have to do is go to any of my new videos and rate them up and then just leave a comment down below in the comment section and it doesn't need to have a key phrase it just has to be a relevant comment and you'll be entered that way. Now of course there are a couple of other requirements that you have to meet before you can enter to win the fourth generation iPad so just make sure you watch that video first you can check it out down below in the more info once you have all the details you can come back to this video and gain an entry. Again, gaining entries is very simple. So just make sure you watch that video if you haven't already. All right, first, earlier this week on Monday, December 17th, Apple seeded iOS 6.1 beta 4 to developers. Now 6.1 will of course be Apple's next major public firmware release. We're on the fourth beta right now and it's due to be released very soon. Now 6.1 does bring a new implementation method for Apple's in-house mapping service. So developers will now be able to implement Apple Maps into their iOS applications. Now, it also brings minor changes to Safari and it improves how Passbook handles boarding passes. And also speaking of firmwares, just a day after Apple seeded 6.1 beta 4 to developers, so Tuesday, December 18th, Apple released iOS 6.0.2 exclusively to the iPhone 5 and the iPad mini. So users with those two new iOS based devices will be able to update to 6.0.2. Now it only really addresses one thing and that's a bug that could impact Wi-Fi. So we have an unnamed bug that's fixed in 6.0.2, which again is only available for the iPhone 5 as well as the iPad mini. Now after 6.0.2 is released, I made a video and I went into depth on the new firmware. I discussed how Apple hates fragmentation and that they most likely release 6.0.2 to prepare for 6.1 so that everybody will be able to use the over-the-air update feature. Again, I also touched on 6.1, the 6.1 beta 4 firmware, as well as 6.0.1 and iOS 6 in general, as well as basically just general information for the iOS 6 jailbreak for all iOS-based devices. Now, I did also bring up the fact that POSIX Ninja is actually working on a boot ROM-based exploit jailbreak that will encompass all devices powered by either an A5, A5X, A6, or A6X process which does include all current devices that can run iOS 6. So if you guys want more details on everything, again, from 6.0.2 to 6.1 to information on the jailbreak, just be sure to check out that video. I'll have a link to it down below in the more info, as well as in an annotation form on the screen right now if you're on the desktop version of YouTube. Now, speaking of 6.0.2, numerous iPhone 5 as well as iPad mini users who have updated to the new firmware have noticed that their battery isn't lasting as long as if they were on iOS 6 or 6.0.1. Now, this is likely because the unnamed Wi-Fi bug that Apple fixed now now causes the device to search harder for Wi-Fi networks. So if you have Wi-Fi enabled, it's likely that your device's battery just won't last as long and you won't get the battery life you're used to. However, other users have reported either the same battery life or even better battery life than when they were on a previous firmware. So it seems just kind of like a fluke thing and it's definitely inconsistent and hard to pinpoint which devices will experience the issue unless you actually update to 6.0.2 and test it out for yourself. At any rate though, hopefully Apple will address this issue in iOS 6.1 when it's released in the near future. All right, moving on. I'm sure as many of you who watch my videos are aware, Google Maps is no longer present in iOS 6. However, an official Google Maps app is now available for download inside of Apple's App Store, so iOS 6 users who are used to Google Maps can now download a new and improved version of the Google Maps app and use it in lieu of the custom in-house mapping solution that Apple brought to the table with iOS 6. Well, apparently in just 48 hours, after the app's release to the App Store, it was downloaded over 10 million times and it skyrocketed to the number one position in the top charts for the top free application in the App Store. Now that's absolutely astounding. However, to put it in perspective for you guys, back in September, iOS 6 had been adopted by over 100 million users. So over 100 million devices were on Apple's latest firmware, iOS 6, and now that number is significantly greater. Unfortunately, there isn't a new updated official number, but that just shows 
gives you that less than 10% of the users on iOS 6 have actually downloaded the Google Maps app. Now I've actually found myself using both applications depending on where I go and depending on what I need the app for. All right, moving on, Mobile Futures actually collected some really interesting information on the entire mobile industry. Now there are two key statistics that actually stood out to me. The first one is that Apple sold more iOS-based devices in 2012 than they've sold computers in the entire company's history. So that's beyond amazing for Apple and it just shows how many users are still buying iOS devices. And the second one was even more impressive. It's related to the iPhone 5. So when 2012 comes to an end, the iPhone 5 will have been available on the market to the public for about three months. And it's estimated that in 2012 alone, the iPhone 5 will increase the approximately $15 trillion US economy by about half a percent or $75 billion. Now that's just one phone, one model from Apple. All right, and finally, also earlier this week, I did release a video on the 27 inch iMac. So yes, I finally received my 27 inch iMac, which is equipped with a 3.4 gigahertz Intel Core i7 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, a three terabyte fusion drive, and an NVIDIA GeForce graphics card with two gigabytes of dedicated GDDR5 graphics memory. So if you guys wanna watch my unboxing video, just be sure to check it out. I'll have a link to it down below in the more info. Of course, you can enter the giveaway on that video. So if you want additional chances to win, just be sure to go to that video, like it, and leave a comment in the comment section. All right, now for the question of the day, I'm curious to see what you guys think. If you have an iPhone 5 or an iPad mini, or if you had one of those two devices, would you update to 6.0.2 from either iOS 6 or 6.0.1? Again, let me know in the comment section below or on Best Tech Info. Also, don't forget again to rate this video up and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos and just leave a comment in the comment section to be automatically entered into the giveaway. Also, to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me in one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.